What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike Dyack. I'm a licensed master plumber in the state of New York and also the state of South Carolina. Uh, we also do HVAC in both states as well and coming soon, God willing, to the state of Florida. My company's Pipe Doctor Home Services. We're based out of New York in Valley Stream. Uh, on this video, I am doing a real life service call for a new client, a new caller, uh, doesn't live too far from our shop in Valley Stream in West Hempstead. Uh, they have a central air conditioning system that's not doing anything. She tried replacing the batteries and the thermostat. She checked the circuit breakers. She checked the switch. Uh, everything appears to be fine. The thermostat is just blinking fan and cool. Let's go see what's going on and hopefully restore some comfort cooling to this new client and build a new relationship. Smash that thumbs up button in advance and uh, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Let's go! Hi, Ms. Khan. Yes. Hi, I'm Mike. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Come in. Oh, you lose something. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> um, how may I help you? So, yeah, the unit is not turning on. Okay. Um, I did do all of, I guess, the troubleshooting. I changed the batteries on the thermostat. How many thermostats do you have in the house? Two. One here and one in the master. Okay. How many uh, outdoor units are there? One outdoor unit. Okay. So the furnace or the blower is in the basement, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, did you make sure the switch was on? Yeah. I even yeah. turned it off. I turned it off, turned it back on. I didn't like let it sit. I turned everything off, let it sit for like half of the day. When did this problem start? I noticed it like yesterday, I noticed it, but I turned it on like two days ago and it turned on because okay. I had, you know, turn it off for the winter, nice. turn it back on when it's... The other day, on. was that the first time you turned it on yeah, this season? And yeah. it cooled okay then? Yeah, it worked okay. perfectly fine. And then what do you normally set the thermostat to? Like uh, 70, 71. Okay, before we head on to the equipment, I want to review a couple things. Um, I like to ask a certain set of questions uh, from my clients, especially when I'm there for the first time. Uh, you know, after the initial meet and greet, you know, introducing yourself, your name, if your name is on your shirt, perfect. Hey, hi, I'm Mike. You're dressing by, you know, sir or ma'am uh, and their last name. Just, you know, solidifies that you're a professional, you know what you're doing. So if you notice, in the conversation I just had with the homeowner, uh, we determined that there's the system is in the, in the basement. There's two thermostats, first floor, master bedroom. We have one unit outside and the switch is on at the top of the, the stairs. She changed the batteries and got a little more information out of her. So I'd like to just get a good understanding of what's going on, what they've attempted to do. Uh, like, for example, if they told me that, hey, I just replaced the thermostat and it worked fine before that. Now it didn't. So I'm immediately going to think about uh, maybe they blew a fuse. Think about it. So let's go check out the equipment and watch as I diagnose uh, the issue, which is um, no blow or no nothing. Some of the work that I do, this is a good example. So we have a Weather King gas-fired furnace here. Um, first observation, we have a lot of rust on the top of the combustion chamber plate that holds two rollout switches, one there and one there. That's been coming from the inducer right there. Oh, right there, sorry. Get in there a little bit better. Yep, right there. So we do have water dripping down our chimney, making our way, th hitting that 45, this 45, then dripping out on top of the furnace. Here's our control board. I took the fuse out and the fuse is blown. Let's verify that with a right, voltmeter. So I have my voltmeter, I'm using the Fluke 902 FC. HVAC clamp on meter, we're set to read resistance or continuity, and I have nothing across my purple three amp fuse. And to verify that we have good connections at our meter, we touch them together, so our fuse is bad. The question is what destroyed the fuse and what's preventing this homeowner from having cooling, or even if it was winter, heating. Could it be water related? I don't think so. We have a spark ignition system here, so there's no hot surface igniter that could get wet and short out the system. And regardless, that would be 110 volts. It wouldn't be 24 volts. There's my fuse location. I think we have a problem at the outdoor unit. Uh, take your guess in the comment section down below. All right, before we head outside, I removed Y and C. C is our common. 
it's like a neutral. Y is the cooling circuit. So when there is a call for cooling at the thermostat, 24 volts goes from the red wire to the Y wire, comes down to here across the yellow. They pigtailed this brown and that brown together, and that goes to Y terminal on the integrated control board for the furnace. And our white went to our common right there at the top left. Let's check resistance on this wire and see if we have a short in the wire or a bad contact. We're getting 19.5. So a rule of thumb, anything in the teens is generally acceptable. So I don't think we have a problem with the wire or the contactor, but let's pop in a new fuse and see what happens. All right, new fuse is installed. I used the Wago three conductor 221 wire connector to replace the wire nut that was there. You really shouldn't be reusing these. Um, continuity checked resistance on my condenser wire. Um, let's see what happens. Either it pops or it doesn't. It does not pop. So I want to inspect the wiring going to our condenser. So let's go check out our condenser. Now that the blower is on, we have 24 volts. We have 24 volts. We could have a signal going to our condenser. And if there's a short there, the resistance test would have picked that up. But maybe there's a landscaper who's got a little crazy with the weed whacker. So let's go see. So for reference, this is called your outdoor condensing unit. Uh, to spare you the full scientific, all this mumble jumble, the air conditioning system works by extracting heat from inside your house and pushes it out here. If you ever notice on a hot day or a day when air conditioning's on, the air coming out of here is hot. Think of that as your heat leaving the house and going outside. This unit needs a signal to turn on. Okay. It gets power by means of here, a lot of power. You know, 240 volts, usually 20 to 30 to 40 amps. It's a lot of power. It is a hungry monster and it sucks the money out of your pocket, right? But it gets a very simple signal from inside by means what we're checking by the furnace from the thermostat. This wire right here, all right, it's good thing the door is off because remember I said I'm looking for a short. There's all your exposed wire wrapped around the copper refrigeration line. And that is the reason, more than likely, why your fuse blew. That's all exposed wiring. See that? Yeah. It's just freight, you know, chipping away. Yeah. So I'm quite confident we found the cause of the failure. All right, the old wiring is gone. We used half inch liquidite. I went through that little hole. I removed the plastic uh, grommet that was holding the low voltage wiring. Used some zip ties. And I redid our connection there. Try to hide it under in the shade. And last but not least, one little snip left. Boom. Let's put our fuse in, door on, and check the hole. All right, fuse is in. Let's put the door on. And there's our blower. If we got blower, we're going to have right. to condense. And our outdoor unit is running. We are discharging some warmish hot air this four ton weather king outdoor condensing unit is manufactured in february 2008 if you look at the model number we'll see a 48 that represents 48,000 btus which equals a four ton system 13 on this uh, model number i guess whatever you want to call it stands for the SEER, so it's a 13 SEER system, the AJA 48A01 is our data plate, we're an R22 system, it came back to recharge with 123 ounces, and the max design operating pressure of 300 PSI with normal base of 150. Assembled in Mexico. All right, let's summarize the service call. We did a professional meet and greet at the front door. Uh, we listened after asking certain questions from the homeowner, what's going on, getting a good understanding of the system. 
we go to the equipment, we go through some preliminary tests, we find the fuse blown, um, we checked the control wire going to the outdoor unit, which is typically the failure point or the contactor. Uh, I ohmed that out. We had no shorts to ground at that point, and I had good ohms readings or resistance readings from coming back from the contactor. Um, putting a fuse in, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have checked, did a visual inspection of the wiring first. That would have been a good idea. I did not do that. So I don't say, hey, let's do what I do. But I would have uh, checked outside visually, making sure I have nothing out of the ordinary. But I, I took a gamble. Um, I didn't have any shorts to ground. And I felt quite confident I wasn't going to blow a fuse unless there was something else shorting out the uh, fuse and giving me a lack of 24 volts. Uh, we went outside, I immediately saw the problem, but I started recording with the camera to give the homeowner a little bit of an education. They're paying me top dollar, right? I am, uh, I wouldn't say I'm the most expensive in the neighborhood, but I'm not the cheapest, uh, but I'm more in the higher end. You know, you're paying a trip charge, you're paying a, a minimum an hour, an hourly, an hour rate for my labor, and um, listen, the parts are generating on the truck, so if the fuse on Amazon is 30 cents, don't expect to buy it for 30 cents, okay? Let's keep it real. The fuse on my truck is not 30 cents, all right? It doesn't even cost me 30 cents. It probably cost me a couple dollars, but there's a reasonable markup on that. So I explained what's going on, out, you know, what she has outside, going over the age, noticing the problem, um, coming up with a solution on how we can correct this, correcting the problem after getting approval, and completing the repair, and at the end, um, you know, giving a little more information on that, also with some options. Uh, listen, if you replace the outdoor condenser, you're replacing the evaporator. Most people, when they have a furnace, when you replace the evaporator and the condenser, you're replacing the furnace. All right, just give me food for thought. Uh, and as leaving, thanking them for calling us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for calling Pipe Doctor. My name is Mike. If you want to ask me if you call us in the future, I would really appreciate it. Or anyone else in the company would be more than glad to fix any problems you have. We do plumbing, heating, and as you know, air conditioning. I uh, gave her my card and a magnet for her refrigerator. Thanks so much for watching. If you want any stickers, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. I would appreciate it if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button, and let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. The only way I can grow is by getting criticism and also good, you know, attaboy from my community. Thank you so much for watching. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.